Good morning, baby goslings. How's it going, my little ones? Huh? How's it going? Yeah. I come bearing greens, your favorite. So yeah, most of my goslings are doing really well. They're about five days old now, six days old for some of them. And for the most part, they're doing good. They love eating greens. I usually will go out and pick some fresh grass and fresh dandelion greens. Gives them a little extra boost of nutrition for them. As well as just something to do. They love to chew on this stuff and pull at it. It's in a gosling's inherent nature to want to rip and chew at stuff like this. Here, little one. Here, you can have some too. Gotta make sure the little guys don't get crowded out. It's funny, I've got a couple different breeds of gosling here. You know, we have the Toulouse gosling and the Emden gosling, which are a bigger breed, and then the Pilgrim, which is like a medium-sized breed. And as they're starting to age, you can really see their difference in size just based on the breed. They are all really healthy and seem pretty happy and do, are doing good. But I will say there is one little gosling that's got me a tad concerned. It's that one right there. Now, all of my birds are hybrids, or at least most of my birds are hybrids. And so I'm guessing she's a pilgrim, maybe a female pilgrim, maybe something else. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. But if you look at her, you'll notice that she's having a little bit of trouble walking. She's smaller than her siblings. She's got kind of a limp. She was also the last to hatch, even though she was actually one of my earliest pippers. And she's got some development problems. Come with me, little goosely. So specifically, you'll notice she doesn't walk around quite like the other ones. And if you look at her legs, one of them is kind of wonky. Hey, little girl. Aw. There's no need to be scared. I'm here to help you today. This leg right here keeps drifting backwards, and then the front leg kind of gets all cockeyed. So I'm gonna try a little thing to help her, actually. So I have a standard twist tie, like you'd have for a garbage bag, or you'd get at a grocery store or something. What I'm gonna do is, so you create like a little mini brace for her. Try to keep her legs straight. So if I can correct this properly, she will grow up to be a normal healthy gosling, or normal healthy goose, I should say. But you gotta do it early. She's only still a couple days old. Like I said, she's the youngest. Hang on, don't fight me there, sweetie. Yeah, sometimes when these baby birds are hatched, they have leg problems. Sometimes they don't. You know, Ron Swanson, our duck who thinks she's a goose, she had some leg problems. So you can see now, it forces her to move both legs at the same time as she moves. And I think that will help her. What are you doing there, Mr. Pablo? Hey. Hey, take it easy. This girl's a medical project of mine. Okay, can you walk around now? Can I see you walk? Here you go, sweetie. You can see she's standing up better already. This is good. Now it's gonna take a couple of days her, of her using this. Hopefully she'll develop and get better. But as she gets bigger and better, I think she will get better coordination. I might have to build a second brace to help her as she gets larger, but right now she looks good. All right, let's put you back with your family. Okay, and possibly small gasoline, go back to be with your brothers and sisters. Don't worry, little one, it's gonna be tough at first, but it gets easier. You'll notice I still have these heat lamps over here. It was 34 degrees when I got out this morning, so I think they definitely need that extra heat. As far as what I feed these little ones, it's a combination of standard chick grower food, unmedicated, and then I mix it with some brewer's yeast. This stuff isn't cheap, but it really does make all the difference in terms of good healthy development of my birds, especially as it pertains to their leg development. So in particular for my littlest gosling, this is important. I don't use a ton. It's like, I don't know, maybe one scooper's worth of this stuff for every container's worth of food that I have here. What I like to do is though pre-mix it. The reason for that is the brewer's yeast tends to clump up when it gets wet and as the birds eat it, it gets wet. And so if you have too much of just the powder, it's gonna turn into like this rock hard substance. I find by shaking it around and mixing it around before I feed it to them, it does a better job of distributing the brewer's yeast. And then I just add it to their tray. Give it back to them. I bet they're gonna be hungry for it. There you go guys. Water, little ones. 
Overall though, these guys are doing really well and developing very well, especially given how cold it is right now. You'll notice that there's only 10 in there right now because I've already sold one of the goslings. There's a slight chance I might sell a couple more over the weekend. If you guys are interested in buying goslings from our farm, I'll leave a link down below and I'll actually just put them up on our website so you can buy them. We're gonna have goslings again for the next couple of weeks before we start converting them over into adult birds. Now the one thing I gotta warn you is you gotta be able to come up to our farm to pick up the birds. We can't deliver them and we can't send them by the mail. So if you wanna buy one of these adorable little goslings or the next two or three generations that I currently have inside the incubator, just uh, check out our website. I'll leave that link right down below. I gotta go do my chores, but I'll check back in on these little ones and particularly the littlest one to see how they're doing. I'm also gonna give them a special treat that they are gonna go crazy for, I think. Release the Kraken! It's a beautiful day, isn't there, ducks? Yes, it is. How are we doing in there, Mother Goose? Things good in the nest? Yeah, she's hunkered down there. Pretty soon, we'll have some more goslings coming out of there, I think. You guys can tell, though. Most of my other geese are starting to go through their molt. Look at this, look at this. I'm so ticked off that I'm molting. I see they look a little bit ragamuffin. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's Bruce and his crew. I actually see they're doing pretty darn good. They still stay to themselves. Bruce has entirely given up on the rest of the flock. Yeah, everybody seems pretty content and happy. Good morning, weird chickens. I got a surprise for you. Allison had some expired hummus, <laughs> and you guys can dig into that. Chickpeas for chickens, you know? Now, you guys might be noticing that we're missing one of the weird chickens, and that's, again, because she's doing some work for us. Hey, girl. Still sitting on that nest? Doing some good work? You keep doing it. We'll have some baby chickens very soon. Yeah, I'm excited for the baby chickens that are gonna be coming. I'm excited for the baby geese that are here and the future baby geese are coming. And pretty soon, I'll start hatching the ducks. For those of you guys who are wondering, I wait later in the year for hatching of ducks and chickens, just because number one, it's easier to raise them when it's warmer out. And then number two, I really try to maximize my brooder space and incubator space to take advantage of goose season because they're the most profitable animal here on the farm. Rise and shine, chickens! Rise and shine. I got treats for you, girls. <laughs> yeah, these chickens are like little land piranhas. I'll usually lock them in into this run if I'm giving them chicken table scraps because the chickens can eat a lot more stuff than, say, the ducks or the geese. You can see, though, the ducks are very curious about what's going on here, and they're a little bit jealous. But these kitchen scraps are definitely chicken scraps. I think Toby's a little jealous, too. Don't worry, buddy. I'm going to feed you. Oh, stay in there. Hey, stay, stay, stay in there. I'll leave them in there for an hour or so just to let them pick through all the scraps. Once they're done with the scraps, I'll let them go free. Come on, Toby. Time for another brush out. It's your favorite. Good boy, yes. Get your butt, come on. You get all these stray hairs off. Look at these, look at this. It's all just coming off here. Don't eat it, man. It's part of my special project. Toby has developed this very interesting fascination with eating his fur. Sit, stay. Never thought that dog fur was going to be one of the greatest natural resources we had on this farm. Okay, good job, buddy. Let's get you some breakfast. Enjoy, buddy. <laughs> hey, get out of here, you ducks. Go, 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 go. Duke Silver, I see you there. Get out of there. Hey, hey, get out. Go, go, go. Toby, eat your food or these ducks are going to eat your food, homie. Toby, come here. I don't know what to tell you. Here you go. Here, I'll throw a treat on top of it. 
Oh, you just took the treat. <laughs> I love Toby, but he is like the least food motivated dog that I know. Which is funny too, because oftentimes one of the biggest criticism of uh, Maremmas is that they are very like food protective, but not my Toby dog, that's for sure. Alrighty, looks like our chickens have eaten their slop, so I'll let them out. Out you go, girls. Freedom. Woo, escape. How's it going there, General Washington? You being a good boy? Alexander Hamilton hasn't figured out how the doors work. There he goes. Nope, he snuck around to get to the food. Such a weird ritual has developed with Toby and Pablo. I even tried to feed Pablo this morning so he wouldn't come to eat with Toby, but he really wants to. And Toby has this job of guarding for Pablo, who's like the alpha dog. And then he'll start sharing. And the chickens get chased away. <laughs> Weird stuff going on here at our farm. Let's go see what our goose egg situation looks like this morning. Based on my math, she's due at any point. And you, oof, all you girls are looking quite naked neck right now. Yep, I just want to grab this one egg. Okay. <laughs> you know, sometimes the geese will fight hard and be very aggressive. Other times they just turn into a statue. She lost her nest position and now this one just took it over. <laughs> and this one's trying to get in there as well. It's not like there isn't plenty of space here for these gals, but I gotta do a better job next year setting up nests. And we got these two who've also been holding down the fort. They've been like a team this whole time. I bet they're gonna have some young ones very soon as well. By the way, there was actually one last thing I wanted to show you what I'm feeding the baby goslings, so let's go do that. So as I was showing you earlier, brewer's yeast is one way that I give my ducklings and goslings niacin. Freshly harvested grasses and plants is a second way that I give it to them. But then the third way, and this might be their favorite way, is I like to give them some defrosted frozen peas. It's also super healthy for them. Here you go, little ones. Here, vegan. They're so used to me feeding them from up above. Here you go. This is the first time that these birds are getting access to peas, so it's taking them a minute to kind of get used to it and understand it. But I bet you by the time I come to check on them again later this morning, they will have devoured them. I can't stand it, guys. Come on, it's good stuff. There's nothing like seeing new birds explore something for the first time. 